What's going on guys? So if you saw the last video of the 2023 Ram Rebel, this is the heavy duty 2500 series truck, three quarter ton truck, uh, you probably saw that we loaded a trailer, it's actually right on the other side of the truck, with this Celaton scale. We put it kind of halfway between the coupler and the front axles, and we applied weight up to, I think 2,400 pounds or something. And this is a little earlier today, so it was really just a little while ago for us, but it may have been a couple days for you. Well, what we did there was we applied all this weight to see specifically how much of it was gonna transfer to the actual tongue weight scale that we have right here on this way safe scale. And we showed you it was, I think at the most, it was about 1800 pounds, even when we had the trailer front loaded at about 2400 pounds. So we're gonna do something a little bit more different, but it's actually gonna be a little bit more precise because of how we're doing this. We're gonna take the Celaton scale loaded in the bed of this Ram truck, and we're gonna press down on it with the mini excavator, and we're gonna see how this truck handles weight. Now I wanna to talk to you about something real quick, so hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, so, I know that a lot of folks are going to automatically say, well, whatever weight you put in the bed of the truck doesn't really account for or factor in the weight of people, supplies, and cargo inside of the truck. And that's absolutely correct. Most people, when they're hitching up to an RV or a travel trailer or whatnot, they, for some reason, don't factor in their own weight. They don't factor in the food they bring or the supplies or the generator, things like that. And the whole point of this, though, is just to show you how this truck handles weight, period. It's not necessarily to say, okay, so we're only going to put a certain amount of weight in the back and then we're going to factor for the people sitting inside. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to take this truck to its maximum payload capacity of 2,900 pounds with the excavator. So hopefully I can get it there. And what we're going to determine at this point is how the truck would sit if all of that weight capacity was factoring only the weight in the bed of the truck and not the weight throughout the rest of the vehicle. So that's the key point to remember here is that whenever you're accounting for weight in the vehicle, you have to account for all of it, not just what's in the bed of your truck. When people tow travel trailers and RVs and all those different things, again, oftentimes they may see a travel trailer that weighs 10,000 pounds dry. They factor in about 15% of that possibly transferring to the truck, which is about 1,500 pounds. And they think, well, if I have a half ton truck with 1,500 pounds worth of payload capacity, I can handle a 10,000 pound trailer transferring 1,500 pounds to the truck but then they forget the fact that they have a family of four that probably weighs upwards of six to 800 pounds. And then they have a generator in the bed of their truck, which probably weighs hundred pounds. They have a weight distribution hitch, which weighs over hundred pounds. And then they have all of their supplies, their toolboxes, their gear, or whatever else they throw in the truck. And typically that weight averages in around 900 pounds total. So if you have a 10,000 pound travel trailer, 1500 pounds tra transfers just to the back of your truck, and you have 900 pounds in the bed of your truck or inside of your truck completely loaded, then you're actually closer to 2,400 pounds. So this truck by itself, because it's equipped with the Hemi and not the diesel Cummins, it weighs significantly less when it's dry. And because of that, it gives you significantly more weight back in terms of payload capacity. So this truck is actually gonna have probably about 600 pounds worth of payload capacity above what a truck with the Cummins similarly equipped would have. And that's pretty cool. So again, this has the Hemi in it. We have a little over 2,900 pounds worth of maximum payload capacity. And we're gonna put the scale in the bed. We're gonna put the weight down on top of it. And we're gonna see how this truck looks with weight added to it. Okay, so I've positioned the ram about eight feet in front of the mini X. I'll pull it up just a little bit. I may turn it around. If I don't get the weight, uh, well, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get the weight I want pressing down, but if for some reason I don't feel I am, I can always flip the blade around and 
yeah, I can push down even further because it's a lot harder to lift the front off the ground when you have the blade on the back side. But I don't think we'll have any problem getting to that magical 3,900 pounds. We have the scale on the back. Now this assembly right here weighs, if I'm correct, I believe it weighs close to 200 pounds, all of this. Um, and we got to factor that in, I suppose. So in reality, we just have to get to like 2,700 pounds roughly, but we're probably going to go a little over that because I kind of want to see what's going to happen. I kind of want to see how it's going to affect the, uh, the suspension on the truck and overall just what it's going to look like. So this ought to be fun. We're going to go ahead and move the excavator up a little bit, get the display probably right here so you can see it nice and clear whenever we start loading the weight on the back and uh, probably get a good camera angle. Well, maybe we'll put the display right here so we can get a good camera angle of the truck before we uh, put the weight down and then after or at least during the process of pushing the weight down and then after when we're uh, fully loaded on it. Okay, so measurement before we add the weight, 43 inches from the bottom of the fender to the ground itself. We might be a little off because we're on sand, so it might be a little bit more than that, but 43 inches. Now we have the scale. We're gonna go and get the display. We're gonna turn this on and we're gonna start adding some weight. Okay, so I think this is gonna be a good angle. You can see the scale. You can see the actual scale of the readout, and then you can see the side. And uh, this should be a good, good position for being able to see what happens with all of this. Then we'll get back out and we'll take another measurement. Okay, we're at 2,720 pounds, which is about the maximum capacity when you factor in the weight of the scale and the pallet underneath it. Roughly 2,900 pounds. So this is what the truck looks like under full load. Let's quickly take a measurement of it real quick so we can kind of get an idea of what that looks like. Okay, let's see where we're at here. We were 43, we were at 39 and a half. So, three and a half inches. That's pretty crazy. All right, so that is, well, it's dropping off a little bit, but roughly 2,700 pounds. Let's go a little higher than that. Let's see what it takes to, uh, to really get this thing compressed down. Okay, so right at 3,000 pounds, roughly 3,200 pounds. That's what the truck will look like if you put literally a ton and a half of weight in the bed. Is that better or worse than you thought? That's the question. Is this uh, a lot worse or uh, kind of surprising? To me, it's kind of surprising. The truck doesn't really look that bad. You know, you could go to Lowe's, get a pallet of stuff, throw it in the back, and this is what it's gonna look like when it's squatted. That's pretty crazy. And that's, I said roughly 3,000 pounds. It's dropping off a little bit, 2,970. Well, it's over 3,000 because of the weight of all that stuff in there. Just goes to show you that three quarter ton truck, back in the day, that actually meant the payload capacity was three quarters of a ton. Now you see we have, a, we have twice that in here. We have a ton and a half of weight in here and the truck is handling it exceptionally well. Gotta be honest with you, that looks really good. It doesn't look bad. 
Now it is over the weight and I definitely wouldn't want to load this up like this and drive it down the road. You would feel very, very, uh, let's just say you wouldn't have a lot of confidence driving like this. At least I don't believe so. Um, that is using all the payload capacity and then a little bit more just in the bed of the truck. And that's not factoring anybody inside of the vehicle, which would kind of level the weight out a little bit more towards the front, but not that much more. But you can definitely see what this type of weight does to this heavy duty truck. And just for the sake of comparison, if you guys remember where I used that exact same scale in the bed of my truck, the pin weight of the fifth wheel, our Brookstone right over there, was 30, over 3,400 pounds, plus the weight of the scale and everything else, and the weight of all the stuff I already have in the truck. So when you factor in the payload capacity differences and how weight is handled by a dually, by something that has a significantly higher payload capacity, you'll really understand why three quarter ton trucks aren't necessarily ideal for towing fifth wheels. Because even on lighter fifth wheels, even on a 10,000 pound GVWR fifth wheel, you're still gonna transfer upwards of 2,000 pounds to the bed of your vehicle. And that's not including the weight of your hitch, the weight of whatever you have in the truck, people, passengers, and all that other stuff. So even though that truck over there has has a 2,900 pound and change payload capacity, imagine this, if you had a small, um, you know, let's say a Forest River Impression fifth wheel with a 10,000 pound GVWR, which is a very light, very short fifth wheel, dry, you're gonna transfer about 2,000 pounds to the bed of your truck. Once you load it up with stuff, all the supplies and everything, you're probably gonna be over 2,000 pounds by about a couple hundred, maybe 2,200, 2,250 pounds. But then when you load people, supplies, and all that in the vehicle, plus the hitch, your typical fifth wheel hitch is gonna be about 250 pounds, or roughly 200 to 250 pounds. So you have all of that weight in the bed of your truck, and then the people, all the folks that are actually gonna be sitting in the truck, you're gonna be well over 2,900 pounds. And that's what you really have to understand is the suspension of different trucks are designed for the type of payload and hauling that that specific truck is intended for. And when you start going way over that, or when you even start creeping up to the maximum capability, that's really when you start to see truck ride handling, comfort, all of that stuff go down the drain. And more importantly, you start to feel how the trailer's controlling the truck more than the truck's controlling the trailer. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. It was a fun video to make. I mean, I got to show you guys some really interesting, I think, weights and, and how things kind of equate to a suspension sag perspective. Guys, leave a comment below. I'd love to know your thoughts. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again very soon.